Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and this is Craft Chat. So today I'm going to be answering some of your crafty questions and um, we're going to be making some altered paper clips for some visual interest, but this time I'm going to be incorporating fabric since we've been playing a little bit with fabric these days. So I have a pile of fabric scraps. I have a big pile of fabric scraps. Um, okay, so I've been cutting more fabric to make more fabric packs and in doing so I'm ending up with a lot of extra little pieces and um, I'm amassing those so I thought it might be fun to have um, a second prize on uh, these Fridays uh, we I do the um, the scrap scrappy contest where it's paper scraps but I thought I'm starting to get so many of these little tiny scraps I'll never be able to use them all why don't I also give away a fabric scrap prize. So I have a big bag just becoming very full. Um, so what the heck? Anyway, so I just took some tiny pieces and I thought I would show you just how you can make some fun little um, altered paper clips with these guys. Okay, so um, in uh, just some basic, I'm just getting this pair of scissors. Okay, I can't find my regular ones. All right, I'll use these. Oh, there's my regular ones. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to uh, make some, um, oh, I, I did buy more paper clips. Yeah, I think I bought the mother load. I bought all the paper clips on the planet. Nobody else can have any paper clips. I have them all. <laughs> yeah, no, I just figure I know I'm going to use them, so I buy them in bulk. These are just regular, uh, regular office paper clips. They don't have the um, plastic coating on them. I prefer them just metal, but if they come plastic coated, that's fine. I guess these are probably... Um, I'm measuring, I know, I know, an inch and a quarter, in case anybody's wondering. These are inch and a quarter. I like the jumbo ones, too, the bigger ones, but these are the ones that I got right now. So we're going to work with what we got. All righty. And am I, I'm just going to grab my glue. Actually, I think, what else? Uh, they really glued in there today. Okay, that was very, very nice. Yeah, that was very good, Fab Fabrifix. Um, let me make up just a few little bases. And some bases can be bigger than others. It gives you a little more room to layer on. And I put the little small loop on the inside, and I'm going to glue that closed. <clears throat> so let's just get a... Uh, I think I picked up a little cold or something. Um, feeling okay. Just sound like... Um, sound like a man. <laughs> I think that's what I sound like. I sound like a man. Um, my voice gets really low when I get a, a little scratchy throat. But... Um, Everything's okay. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're having fun. We got a lot of comments from last week's uh, craft chat. I think it's like 649. Holy mackerel. We were in the 400s before, so that's kind of cool. Thanks very much, everybody, for participating. So basically, if you want to enter into these contests, all you do is, uh, let's say, um, you want to enter next week's contest. You post a comment in this week's video of craft chat and um, Then that you will be automatically entered. It's pretty easy and um, Based yeah, that's 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 all you do and then next week next Friday. I will pull from the previous week's comments and um, Pick winners so and you get to see the winners drawn live on here. It's so exciting and uh, then um, You'd, okay, so what you do is if your name is pulled, you just contact me via email at pam at thepaperoutpost.com and let me know you're the winner of either the scrappy contest or the fabric scrap contest. I guess the paper scrap contest or the fabric scrap contest. I guess it's all in the world of scrappy scrappy contest winners. And, um, and uh, by Thursday of the following week, and then I will go ahead and give me your uh, mailing address in your email and I will go ahead and pop that in the mail to you. So there you go. Pretty easy, pretty fun and um, puts all these little bits and bops to good use and that means I can sleep at night. Okay. Because uh, I really, 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 really tried to use them all and it's just not happening. Yeah, it's just not happening. So, okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, uh, it, it, this is um, like a bed sheet or something and uh, I like the torn look with these. So going to just tear some of this into, oh, it tears so easily, thank you. A nice cotton, all cotton stuff. Yeah, boy, that's that's just really user-friendly when it does that. Um, sometimes you have to go in there and make a little cut with the scissors. Sometimes not, depends. So I'm just pre-preparing um, just some smaller pieces. I don't know how I'm going to use them yet. Really kind of free-flow thought here, just playing. 
And uh, let me answer a crafty question while we are here. Let me go into the comments section and see what you guys are thinking about. Okay, let me put a contains questions thingy here. All right. Pam, uh, this is Impel Pinto asks on the video that just published um, recently, helpful tip for fabric covers. Pam really enjoyed your video. Could you please show us how to make this cover? I have all sorts of fabric that I would like to use uh, to make a soft cover for a journal. Thank you. Uh, sending for love from Portugal. Hi, hi from Portugal. Um, uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. I, I, I feel like I ha made a video on that with that cover, but I, it's, I, I have almost 800 videos and I can't, I, I honestly can't remember. Um, but yeah, I think there's 101 ways to make a fabric cover, but we'll make some fabric covers so you can try different, whatever, you know, would be the easiest way for you, depending on your supplies and things like that. And you don't technically need a sewing machine to make a fabric cover. So let's just get that out there. Let's get that out there in the wind. Um, but it does make life a little bit easier and you can do different designs and techniques and things like that if you have a, if you have a sewing machine. So... Um, and I'm always encouraging you guys to be brave and get one because it's just a tool like a hammer and, um, it can just give you so many more options. It's uh, nothing to be afraid of. There's a million and one YouTube videos on how to work the particular machine you get. If it's your paper machine, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about, don't, don't like, you know, ruin grandma's fancy quilting machine or anything, but, uh, just get something inexpensive that you can, you know, knock around with, learn how to operate. Okay. I think I have enough pieces now. This little piece. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. Look how the fine embroidery on that. Is that so pretty? Um, let's just cut that out of there. I'll just put you on top. You're really pretty, you little piece of fabric, you. Uh, yeah, so um, it is trying to warm up here. Not, not warm yet, but warm-ish. We're in the like 60s, 70s-ish. That's cold for, Lef for a Floridian. I know. I know I feel no mercy from any of you because I know it's much worse elsewhere. I grew up in Canada. I know. I, I do know. Um, but I've been here since I was 21. So, yeah, my blood has thinned a little bit. Okay, what we got? Oh, that's really pretty. All right. Um, let's answer another question. Uh, Sheila Apana asks, great mass making project. She's referring to the tips on mass making fun fabric pockets for junk journals video. Love your nails. Thanks. Um, magenta and nail diamonds are beautiful. Okay. Um, where did you get the old, oh no, I answered that already. Okay. Let's, let's carry on, go down a little lower. I did some of these on my, um, on my podcast. Okay. There's a printer question. I answered that as I was about. Oh, <clears throat> Shara H asks, I love um, the mass making fabric pockets. I love sewing on paper, but my sh machine does not love it. It ends up looking really messy and it's always skipping stitches. Any tips? And then some very smart um, seamstress popped in here and said, uh, her, her name is My Dirty Little Hands. Have you tried to lengthen your stitch? Also, I go slower through paper. Hugs. And, yeah, I think it, um, okay, I'm a complete novice when it comes to sewing, so let's just get that out there. So I know not of what I speak. So I've played with the length, I've played with the tension, and um, I've also noticed that sometimes if your thread is a different thickness in the spool versus the bobbin, that can make the stitching go weird. I've noticed if, you got, if you're trying to sew through too much, too much thickness, that can make it go weird. Um, I like her idea of going slower, that will help. Um, I'm not very good at that. Um, and I'll bet you could YouTube why is this happening with your particular machine and probably there's some tips on how to deal with that. If anybody has any other ideas or tips, please let us know and um, we'll just take it from there. Um, but I, I'm sure there's, there's logic to why this happens and it happens to me all the time too. Um, but I actually like the, the, the imperfection of the, this is Fabrifix glue I'm using here. Um, you can use any glue to glue these together. It doesn't matter. It's just, uh, it's at the ready. And um, you can, yeah, you can use any, 
glue here. It doesn't matter as long as it stays together. That's all you really need. And you could do this a million different ways with these altered paper clips, but um, I like to use up my little bits around my desk. And right now my desk is full of little bits. Let me tell you, we are full of little bits today, but we're going to play with some fabric, mix it up with some paper, do some decorating. <coughs> And sometimes all you need is a little fabric, you know? Oh, I, I do like these. These are cute. Oh, that's cute, too. And thank you for all the, the happy mail that is coming. You guys have given me some fun things to play with. Um, okay, got you off there. Let's see if we put you on here. That's pretty. I like that. Now, how can we layer a little piece of... Oh, maybe a little... Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's very nice. I like that. Um, put you on top. I want to cover that side. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let me glue you down there. You're just such a little pretty piece of fabric. And sometimes you want to do the finger smoosh to knock down the thickness of the fabric just so that it doesn't bleed through um, when you're playing with fabric. Oh, that's pretty just like that, isn't it? Remember like that? That's nice. Okay. And you could do a lot of different things with um, altered paper clips. I mean, they come in so handy. Uh, we can use them for so many things. All right, I think I'm just going to leave that like that. It's very simple. You don't have to cover every little bit, but you can. And um, totally up to you. So we'll just make a, a few of these. It's a pretty little piece of fabric. Let's see. Can, no, no, I just need some help. I don't know if I can tear it. We'll try. Eh, no, it, it, I'm, up, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wefting and we, whatever those is, weft and weave. Is that what it is? but yeah, I'm, I'm not tearing. Sometimes fabric really tears easily. Sometimes it doesn't, and this is one of those days. All right, maybe I'm gonna do a little fabric collage on here. That would be fun. Yeah, and that's a great way to use up little bits and bobs. This is a little bigger one. All right, so let's do a little, just a little fabric collage. Nothing super fancy. We're just, oh, I knocked down my glue globs. Okay, okay, oh, I like that, very fluffy. In the fluff zone. Oh, should I come back with you? That would be kind of cute, wouldn't it? Let me get a thin piece of you over here. Oh, I'm all over the place now. And the glue's drying. The glue's drying. I know, I know, I know. I'm doing my best. Okay, okay. All right, we're on. We're on. Okay, we're good. Okay. Do a little trimming. And you could, you could pull threads and stuff like that if you want to do that look. That's kind of cute. All right, let's put a little thready thread thread. Fraying, fraying is welcome. Oh, we need a little more glue. Oh, yeah, apparently. Yep, we do. Oh, that was a lot. Okay, there we go. Oh, I see. It was a two-layer thing, and I only glued the one layer. Okay, so there we go. We have that. Now we could... Oh, I got glue all over my hands. Um, <coughs> yeah, so that's nothing new. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Nothing like a baby wipe to save the day. Um, let's put a little focal point on there. Let's see what we've done. This is very pretty, this little guy. Let me cut him out of wax paper. He's really pretty. Let me find something a little bit more solid so I can see him. Okay, how about you? Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Somebody cry cut this for me. And um, that's very pretty. Oh, the patience. I'm, I'm just like in awe of the, the patience everybody has with these things. I have no patience. Um... Oh, look how cute that is. That's adorable. See, I could have that fun if I had patience. Where's my patience? Why did, was I not given patience? Oh, and I got um, a little flower. Oh, and look, it matches the colors. That's awesome. All right, so thank you to who sent this little lovely. All right, there we go. Oh, there we go. All done. So cute, right? Yeah, I mean, you just never know what you're going to come up with. They're all different, and they all have their own little personalities. Um, let's answer a question and um, then we'll do one of the drawings right away. How about that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can get a good question here. Um, oh, Amy T says, I have a hard time finding scrapbook paper that is thin. Would a thicker paper like pattern cardstock work well too? Um, what on earth was I making there? Oh, oh yes. Um, She's referring to the video called Got Scrap Paper and Book Pages. Uh, yes, absolutely, because we're using the scrapbook paper as the paper to mount the book page on. And 
So a little stiffer piece would be just fine because that gives you more um, structure and then you can easily use that as a pocket or a tuck or a journal card or something like that. So you can pretty much work with whatever you have. If you have thin papers, you can do so much with that. If you have thick papers, you can do so much with that. Um, if you want thick papers and you have thin papers, just mount, glue some together till you get the thickness that you need or put it on a thin piece of card st stock or a thin piece of chipboard or something like that. Um, and you can also take a bunch of book pages and glue them together and then cut out thicker things out of that. That's another fun thing that you can do. But um, <clears throat> remember, most book pages are quite thin in general and they hold together well. And um, so you don't have to have super thick stuff, but um, so don't, don't worry if your stuff isn't, um, you don't have super um, thick paper. You can work a lot with thinner paper too. It's okay. And it will, it will do the job. Oh, look at that nice tear there. I like that a lot. Okay, let's, let's create something here. What was I going to do? Oh yeah. Okay, so let me put a base. Oh, somebody gave me these wonderful little things. Thank you. Let me just glue that on there. I think these are coffee filters, but I think they're so cute. So I'm going to use something that's way bigger than my base, okay? Oh, excuse me, Sonny. Pardon me, you little s snoring monster. <laughs> He's like sitting behind me, snoring away, snoring away. Um, and maybe I'll just do like a little layer. Now I should probably not have glued it on yet. Yeah, let me do this. I'm going to layer this with, let me find something here. That's pretty. No, not wrong color. Okay. I'm, I'm, I have this little drawer full of bits and bobs. So, let me see if I can, oh, no, can't get it in the picture. Okay, I'll just pull something out. Um, oh, that's nice. So sometimes if you have a field guide or a little piece of um, um, nature or something, you can put that in there. And then there is something like that. It's like a little fabric element, a little nature element. Um, a cut, I don't know what, you know, you just start putting this stuff together and then you can staple it all together and then you can glue the whole thing to a paper clip base and then you're off and running and you got one of those and you could come in here with stickles and bling and gilding paste and all that kind of stuff. But we're, you know, we're just making the bases today. So, okay, let's, let's do a drawing. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, my desk is such a mess. That's okay. It's okay. Cause it's always a mess. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Cause that's, things are happening here. Things are happening. Okay. Let me bring this over. Let me put it on the YouTube random comment picker and let's do the scrappy fabric, fabric scrap prize first. How about that? Okay. Got that. Got that. Did it, did it clear it? What happened? Yeah, that's that. Okay, seven, six. Yeah, I got, apparently it wants me to do it again. It got mad at me. Okay, get your YouTube comments. Okay, <clears throat> I'm bringing the computer over here so you guys can see. I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, we get there? 650. Okay, so let's, let's pick a winner. Let's pick a winner. Let me get you real close here. Okay, and this is for the fabric scrappy prize. Okay, here we go. Ba-boom. Watch the names, watch the names, watch the names. Do you see your name? Do you see your name? Are you going to win? Are you going to win? Michelle Freeman. Congratulations, Michelle Freeman. You are the uh, Fabric Scrappy winner this week. It's the first official Fabric Scrap. Um, and I'll do these until I don't have any Fabric Scraps left. How about that? Um, so congratulations. All you need to do, like I said, is contact me before Thursday next week at pam at thepaperoutpost.com and give me your mailing address and I will mail you a prize to you. Okay. Okay, we're back over here and we're continuing on making um, some different things. So let's see, let's do maybe some more layering. I like that. Um, but maybe I'll make a cluster and then put it on um, that sign. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that. Here's a, here's a tea bag. So, oh, there's stuff in the tea bag. Look at that. Oh, these are cool. All right, we got, I see all these little things. You know what I mean? They're like little things. Oh, there's little birds in here too. How awesome is that? All right, I like the... Uh, the front of the tea bag. I think I'm going to glue that right onto my base. Well, I'm going to use that as, as my base. And then maybe I'll put some fabric on it. That's a pretty matching coordinating color. Could be contrasting too. That's fine. <clears throat> I like to be showing the little tea bag. Oh, okay, wait. No. What, what am I going to do here? Maybe I'll pretend like it's a little 
a little fake bow. You can do it if this is such a fake bow. This here's here's me doing a bow. Oh, there I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And it's nice and flat and it can go in your journal very easily. So all you, you can you can glue it on, but I like to staple those on because they're they're easy and then they stay put. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Maybe we can just I can't pick anything up with these nails. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna pick this up now. All right, there we go. Oh that's cute. Maybe we'll put that there. So just using whatever you have, literally, literally whatever you have hanging around. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be just fun. Um, these are just little tiny elements. These are little, you know, micro canvases. Sorry, I bonked you. Um, uh, oh, maybe I'll put that right where the staple is. It's kind of cute. Yeah, there we go. Huh? Oh, that's cute, right? And I'll just get a base, make sure that my orientation of my paper clip is going to make sense. You can do them different ways. If you want to have it come on from the side or come from the top, maybe I'll have this one come from the side. That might make more sense. So kind of think about that when you're doing your altered paper clips. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> there we are. Perfect, perfect. Okay, very nice. And off you go. All right, and we have oh, one more here, okay. And um, I think I'm gonna do, yeah, I've got a lot of little tiny pieces now, so I think I'm gonna do another little collage version. Um, let me put some glue down. Do, 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 do. Just, uh, that, this Sugar Bells icing piping bottle does give a nice stream of tiny glue. Um, I'm just gonna put little pieces on here, just little, little tiny elements and this is I don't know, it's probably some crazy version of a collage I'm doing here this is insane um, this is like painting on a rice grain why why am I doing this I don't know it's just kind of fun um, well you're sort of a little piece we could do something with you yeah you're small enough to count okay and what are you are oh, you kind of pretty I'll we'll put you in there Maybe just a tiny little piece Um, yeah, so you can, these things will go forever. You'll have, you'll have elements to play with for a hundred years. Once you start collecting a few little sc fabric scraps here and there, don't forget to go in your closet, go in your loved one's closets. It's okay to rob from family. <laughs> family. <laughs> uh, oh, they'll understand. They want you to be happy, right? Am I, am I right? Yeah, they want you to be happy. And, um, it's okay. You just explain like, I'm sorry I was ferreting in your closet for fabric scraps because I'm going to be making altered paper clips. You don't mind, do you, hon? No, not at all. Everything's fine. Really, go ahead. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes in my mind. Whether it really goes that way, I don't know. So this is sort of like a little patchwork guy. That's very fun, right? I mean, you know, what? what is that? Nobody knows, but it's kind of cute. Um, you could put something in the center as a focal point. Let me see. Let me see that. Or you could just leave it as is. You know, it's all good. It is all good. What colors are we working with here? Um, this is kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, that's kind of cute. Yeah, I like that. All right, we're going to stick you down there. All right, here we go. <clears throat> and which way is my paper clip going? Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. There we are. Okay, that's cute, right? And I could put a little stamp or something on there if I wanted to, but very functional, very cute. Uses up little bits and bobs. Okay, let's answer another question. Let me put out here what we made so far so you can kind of see. Okay, we have that one. We have our, our T one. And we have this little guy we just made, the little fabric collage. We have this other little fabric collage and oh our original little butterfly yep there we go okay so um the next question is ba, ba, ba. um 9ah says would love more digitals like the undine theme maybe myths old tales and legends what do you think oh that's a good idea yeah i love old legends and myths and tales and things like that it's just like oh i used to love reading those stories when i was young um you know um ireland makes some great great myth stories legends fables um movies um if you ever see any of those like uh, what was it were roanoke inish or something like that the, the 
there's a bunch of, I can't remember the names, I've seen them on Netflix, but they're really good movies about old mythical tales, uh, interesting things that happen, lore, um, um, good storytelling. Oh, they've, they've got a whole thing over there in relation to storytelling. It's, uh, you know, there are storytellers in Ireland who go around to the different pubs and tell stories and things like that, and uh, um, they're really good storytellers. Oh, they're amazing. Okay, so... One more question, and I think then we will m do our Scrappy Contest winner for the paper scraps. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Handy Sisters Craft says, I just, moved I just moved and I have to reorganize my craft room space. Oh, my God, it's a mess. Where did you get your haberdashery cabinet again? Um, Hobby Lobby. And also, where, how do you store your fabric? Um, I'm not sure if I answered this question a while back. But anyway, here we go. Um... Poorly. I store them poorly, and it's, it's, it became a problem. I, I did take time to organize all my fabrics at one point, um, but because I had amassed so many, they're, they're heavy. And when you want to get one at the bottom, it's really hard to pull that one out because then the tower falls over. And then I decided to store them in bins with... I first separated by color, then I separated by type. I tried everything, and it all, you know, by the end of the year, it was just one big mishmash, because I go in there, and I root around like a ferret, trying to find what I want, and I'm not very good at putting things back the way they should be. Um, and then things get cross-pollinated, like I'll be ferreting over here, and it's right beside another bin, and I can't quite remember which bin, and then I start to separate, and they're not in the right bins anymore. It's, it's mayhem. It's absolute mayhem. <clears throat> Which is um, one reason why I decided it's time to let some of my fabric go because uh, I'll never be able to use it all. So, uh, but I, I really had a great time um, finding them and discovering them and um, bringing them home and just had the grandest wishes uh, for them. So, um, yeah, I thought it's time to make some fabric packs. And uh, so, yeah, they'll be coming. A few more of those. Um, just give me a little time. I'm cutting, 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 cutting. It takes a long time to cut. Um, so, um, not well would be my answer. And I would say anybody who is a fabric aficionado knows what they're doing. Please feel free to put your ideas and tips down below because I have no idea what the right way to do it is. And, um, all I know is that for junk journal making, it is handy to have smaller bits of fabric together in one place, maybe in a Ziploc bag or something so that it's easy to pull from. Otherwise, it's just way too cumbersome to go over, way over there and get that little piece of fabric that you know you have, but it's a, you know, it's just going to take an act of God to get over there and get it and bring it back. And um, so, yep, feel free to put your tips and tricks down below. More than open to it. Love to hear it. And we go from here. Okay. So I think let's go ahead. Let me let, pull these aside to let them dry. They're so pretty. I'm already in love with these. Look at that. I can just make those all day. I don't know. There's something so relaxing about those. Um, I'm going to go back to that old YouTube random comment picker. Okay, I'm uh, bringing my computer over to the messy desk. And, okay, Michelle Freeman. Okay, we're going to... Isn't there a another, like, pick another? Don't I have to... Yeah, pick another winner. Okay, here we go. Um, get there, but there, hopefully that'll be a good spot. And go. This is for... The paper scraps. Robin Smith, congratulations. Robin Smith, you are the winner of the paper scraps uh, for this week's video. And um, also just um, email me uh, your name, then you won the paper scrap package. And um, email me at pam at thepaperoutpost.com and give me your address and then I will mail that off to you. There you go. So um, again, if you are interested in uh, entering the contest, just post a comment to this video and that will be, uh, you will be automatically entered in both the fabric and the paper scrappy contest for next Friday. And um, then you get to see if your name pops up. How fun will that be? Okay, so I think we need to bring in um, the heavy artillery here. I know I don't appreciate that reference. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, yep, it's, it's your time. It's is it go time? It's go time. Not that go time. It's this go time. Okay. I'm ready. Hello. Hello, everybody. Just peeking at you here from the chair. Everything's fine. How are you over there? You're good? Yeah, what you over there? You good. Mom, clean my face. Okay. I, I will. I know. We've been slacking. I know. It's cold out, though. I don't like the cold. 
I like to stay warm. Mom lets me out and I get cold. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're like, I want to come back inside where it's warm. <laughs> okay. And what else is inside? Snacks. <laughs> yes. Do you know where the snack drawer is? Yes. Okay. Do you sometimes corral mom to go by the snack drawer? Yes, yes, I do. And does she give you one? Not all the time. Not all the time? Well, if it was up to me, there would be no kibble and all snacks. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know mom, mom does that sometimes too. It's, it's all snacks and no food. So we, we, but we're, we're working on eating healthier, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe a snack later, okay? Okay, I'm open. Anytime, Mom. You just say the word. Okay, thanks, son. All right. Um, Happy crafting, everybody. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you to everybody who has been here. Welcome to everybody who is new. Um, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter, and you get, if you sign up for that, all the links are down below in the drop down description box. Um, you get a free digital image emailed to you. Um, every month, a new one. It's uh, one image, but it's on multi in multiple sizes on one page, and you can just print it out at home. I also have a link to a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And um, you can tuck that in your junk journals, and it helps explain to folks who have never experienced a junk journal before what this book is and how they might be able to use it, different ideas. And um, what else? Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. I have a junk journal podcast. It's called the Paper Outpost Podcast. And um, you can also listen to everything about junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, and answering your crafty questions. Um, I put new audio material up every Tuesday and Thursday. But every day of the week, you're going to find a uh, newly added um, video podcast, which you can watch on Spotify if you want to watch it there. And also, I have an Etsy shop. So I have digi kits which are printables that you purchase um, from my Etsy shop and then you can um, download them and save them to your computer use them any way you want in your artwork or you they all they are always eternally stored for you in Etsy so if you lose them on your computer just go into your Etsy purchases and you will find um, the download links there as well also I recommend using your Etsy account to purchase them as opposed to being a guest because then Etsy will save it in under your purchases. If it's, if you're a guest, it doesn't know where to put the, your purchases. So just save yourself um, a step and uh, use your Etsy account. And also um, I sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting uh, papers. If you want um, fun things like old antique ledger and uh, old checks, or old receipts, old postcards, old photographs, uh, lots of interesting book pages, a couple of hand dyed papers, um, a nice mix mush of fun things to uh, peruse through. Historians, collectors love these things. There's so many fun finds in there. Um, I try to put as interesting things as I can in those so that you can have some fun discovery along the way. And um, uh, they come 100 plus pieces and free priority shipping is included with that. I also have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that um, things that you see me use on the channel here. I, I try and put links to the things that I use. And um, if you use my links, um, that does help my shop, but you do not pay more for those items. And also I sell, or, oh, if you like the idea of the DigiKits, the printables, but you don't have a printer, or you don't like to print, um, I will print them for you. I do batches of 10 digi kits at a time. And all you do is order the print and mail option. And then uh, you don't need to buy each individual digi kit. You just email me the list or Etsy message me the list of the 10 that you want. And I will print those out on nice lightweight cardstock for you and mail them to you. And um, um, I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase, create with reckless abandon or Everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. Um, you can have that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a mug, a toter, a water bottle. And you can also find me on um, lots of different social media platforms like Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. I have a Facebook group. Um, it's called the Paper Outpost Facebook group. And we're doing lots of uh, fun things over there all the time, weekly and monthly challenges and seeing what you guys make from these videos. And most of all, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. And I'll see you next time. Bye.